Hello there, how's it? By the time I get home, I may or may not regret this walk. Okay, there's no regretting a walk, but I'm probably going to regret how I'm going to look for the next four days just because of walking around in the sun with no sunscreen. But there's no sun, there's no sun. There is literally no sun. There's all these clouds. But every so often the sun peeps out. I'm hot. <sighs> this is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a land that is totally livable, you guys, um, by the international community. If anything, South Africa has been voted the best country to live in, believe in. Um, based on Cape Town. They say that Cape Town is the best city in the world to live in. Believe it or not, literally, that is a pole on the planet. Uh, and the reason why they say that is because of the glory of Cape Town, the beauty of the infrastructure. However, irrespective of the infrastructure being beautiful, uh, it doesn't work. Because every so often it is off for multiple hours in a day. I will, however, give Cape Town this. Their municipal government is a lot more responsible than our municipal government here in Joburg and in KwaZulu Natal and everywhere else. But they're not responsible enough to fix the situation altogether. So Cape Townians still go through power cuts like the rest of us. Maybe not as bad. Uh, why are they not fixing the situation? They can. It's not like there are no resources. It's not like the country is not flowing with milk and honey. It's not like the land is not wealthy in its natural resources to fix the issue. It's just that there's too many people stealing and too many irresponsible people in power. Do you understand that? Then make sure that we cannot get our acts together. This was the route that I wanted to take coming up. Uh, but now I'm going down and all of my huffing and puffing is about to be a little bit better because it's flat now but it's also going to be an in a decline just now. So I've done the incline and we are finished. You know what guys, people who run, who jog, mad respect, I literally like it's not my strong point. <laughs> it's not my strong I need to be able to at the end of exercise know that I'm going to walk right into the house. I don't want to imagine that I still have another two kilometers to go. Like anyway. There are people who spoke like me once upon a time and then did the comrades marathon so who knows anywho anyhow i wanted to show you the glory of our flora um well no not the fauna because who wants to go inside some bush and look at an insect but nonetheless this is where i live and there is great inequality this neighborhood is next door well not next door enough to some informal settlement in Honeydew called I forgot what where people are living in shacks that is the indiscretion of South Africa um, you get people living in shacks next to neighborhoods like this and it's like a thing and people just walk out right by it there's even a documentary on YouTube that is being done that was done by some Oki showing the slums of South Africa and how they are literally right next door to the most opulent and wealthy people in this country here it is that I was praising people for picking up after their dirt after New Year's but turns out I spoke too soon this particular yard or this particular complex appears to have some pretty irresponsible souls that have just dumped their New Year's random rubbish all over the show. Anyway, um, but despite this random rubbish being all over the show after New Year's that these people have dumped, even if they don't pick it up, somebody will. But in Soweto, this rubbish will stay there until the neighbor in Soweto, the very owner of the house in Soweto, comes out and picks it up. Otherwise, it's literally just like a trash can dump site in their house outside of their house it just stays there it's absolutely a travesty what goes on in this country and it's funny because our government is black our government is black and so you would imagine that it would take care of the the everybody equally especially black townships given that we come out of apartheid yet they cater to suburbia that is gentrified far better than they do uh, anywhere else and these are the things that i have been trying to raise and highlight but the South African economy decided to kick me out of corporate South Africa, so my voice doesn't matter. So I can't go in 702 and speak a thing. And so, therefore, for those reasons, I'm just going to be mum forever. Now I've got just YouTube. And that environment, that gangster establishment, has decided to silence me by shadow banning my channel. Like, can life be more rough? Can life be more rough? This is the decline I was talking about. It's so nice to walk here. I bet you can tell that I'm not huffing and puffing as much as I was anymore. No longer am I the, ba the big bad wolfie. Anywho, I am exasperated just from how hot it is. I underestimated how hot it is. Like, I wore this little jersey because it was so, like, nippy. But I guess a walk will increase your body heat, temperature, vibes, type establishment. Oh, I just saw flora, fauna, sorry. I just saw a lizard. You know what, guys? Nature, I love it. Look at it from, like, far away. But don't put me in a bush. Just don't do it. Like, ugh. Anyway. Whatever. Gov the nation. Gov the land. 
and my suburb being Jack in comparison to many others in this country, if you go to Norwood, you will be gobsmacked. Norwood is just a couple of kilometers from here. It also is part of Johannesburg. If you go to Santon, you will be gobsmacked. Uh, if you drive to Cape Town on the garden route, you will be gobsmacked. Uh, like people who underestimate Africa and the infrastructure of Africa and the livability of Africa. This is me showing you that it's totally brick and mortared up. It is raised up from the ground. People have actually built houses here. It's not just this dry, infrastructure barren or bereft land. There is infrastructure like you're looking right now at a street pole, right? It's there. It's just not working every so often. So what's missing is the enabler of it. And to enable infrastructure, what you need is a responsible government, which we do not have. And also our streets in the inroads are ill-built because of people pocketing money, not using the right resources for like tar on the road and so they keep on cracking up and people have to keep on patching them up and so there are potholes and you know that they can do a better job because on the highway rarely ever do you find potholes because there people travel at 120 kilometers an hour maximum and so for those reasons it would be very dangerous to have a pothole on a highway so they they make sure that on highways they do proper like tar whatever is the material that is needed to make sure that uh, an environment does not just chip up and start to crack up all over the show and lift from the road if they can do it on the highways why are they not doing it in the inroads? The number of potholes in this country on the inroads is ridiculous. Inside startups, it's ridiculous. Like if you want to cause people to slow down because it's a neighborhood and they, you don't want kids getting hurt by driving BMWs, okay? Then hook up like speed bumps. Don't let potholes stick around. You know what I mean? Anyway, don't you think this tree is just glorious? It's so gorgeous, so gorgeous. Anyway, whatever, that is South Africa. I wanted to show you my country so you can understand um, you sitting in wherever you might find yourself that it's not that Africa is unlivable or this backyard or backdrop in with kangaroos and zebra only and you have to keep on picking up the poop of those kangaroos and zebra and live in a mud hut if you're there. I don't know why people still think that way. Uh, and also the imaginative of it having no infrastructure at all. It's a beautiful country. It just has a not so pretty government. And not just Africa, but many African countries are like this. If anything, the green in Africa, it is known, Grand Shop, for its wildlife, is by far exceeding in its glory to many other countries in the world or many other continents in the world. If at all it is green, a lot, large parts of Africa are also quite dry because it is a hot continent um, type establishment thing. But the, the glory of the beauty of the land is not, also, is not bereft of technological advancement. It is just bereft of human responsibility. I don't know what it is up with African leaders um, in comparison to everybody else. Like, you know when you have a corrupt leader in Europe, like Zelensky, for instance, their corruption does not cause their country to go to the dogs infrastructurally, whereas African leadership corruption causes the country to not have power, proper running water. Like all these weird things, it's like, hey, 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 like there is so much corruption in the Ukraine. Yes, they've invaded them and we're sorry that they're having a hard time. But prior to there being a war, the people were not struggling with multiple power cuts on end, just non-stop. What is it about African leadership that runs its country into the ground? Remember the other day I told you guys, I've got 10% what battery remaining, so but I'm almost home anyway, it doesn't matter. I was telling you guys the other day about the fact that, in fact, let me do the next part because I'm on nine minutes now.